Today we'll show you the interface used for building apps with an app maker. Welcome to the Sheets to App Show, where we talk about how to tame these tabular beasts into productive applications. Let's start by visiting appmaker.google.com, where you will have access to App Maker if your G Suite admin has granted it. Upon logging in with your G Suite account, one has the option to create a blank app or leverage any of the templates. With that said, if you click blank app, it takes you to the typical app maker canvas where all the magic happens. Let's start from the top left. First, you give your app a name by entering it into the text box above and all changes are auto saved. The three lined hamburger menu allows you to do things like open or create a project as well as delete your project. On the immediate left sidebar, there are three headers, data, pages, and scripts. If you hover over any of them, a plus sign appears in order to create a new record. In this case, let's click the plus sign on data where you can create your fields that will automatically sync with your Cloud SQL instance. Each table created is called a data model. You can optionally import your data columns from a Google spreadsheet. The next section called pages is where you will design how users will interact with the app. You will create a different page for every user journey. For example, you may want to create three pages for your app because you want one page for end users to enter items into a form, another one for admins so they can take action on user requests, and a third page that both admins and end users can see a summary of all the requests made by the end users. Note, if you will use the same widgets and design for multiple pages, let's say you want to have the same banner across all pages, then you could choose to make a page fragment which saves that page with the banner design as a template that can be dragged as a custom widget into your data model editor to save you time and having to recreate that design over and over again. Then there are pop-ups, which are dialogue boxes displaying important information you would like to inform users, such as showing a transaction is in progress or confirming a request was deleted. The app is basically a series of widgets put together on each page by dragging and dropping them onto the page's data model editor. You can find widgets by clicking the four squared icon below the name of the app and scrolling or typing in its search box for a particular widget. Widgets bring in specific functionality to your app, such as creating a form that collects data from users, and you can bind these entries to your Cloud SQL database. Just to name a few main widgets, you can add star ratings, tables, buttons, multi-pick lists, a user directory, a drive file picker, or make your own custom widget. One can make app interfaces beautiful too by using the images widget, HTML box, headers, and can even import icons from the material design gallery by giving it the name it has in the gallery and selecting its style to be an icon. For those newer to material design, it is a library of responsive icons and cards. Out of the box, one can change the color or the style of icons by selecting a widget and then choosing an option from the styles dropdown, which is located right next to the widgets icon. Here, I provided an example where I inserted a label widget and converted it into a star icon. This is possible because AppMaker's seamless connection to the material design library. As long as I select icon from the dropdown and change its name to star in the property editor to the right, it automatically turns my label into a star icon. The dropdown next to styles allows you to change the data model editor's canvas size in case one wishes to build an app for a very specific device screen. Otherwise, the default customize is recommended. The button next to the device display creates a grid on your canvas for more precise alignment during the UI build. The undo and redo buttons on the top right help do just that, or you can use keyboard shortcuts like Control Z to undo. The last and third section of the sidebar on the left is called scripts, which allows users comfortable with using code to add customizations such as sending email notifications via a client or server script. There are links to scripting in AppMaker and AppScript in the description if you wish to learn more. Moving on to the sidebar on the right is the property editor. When you finally drag and drop widgets on your pages and you have the widget selected, 
This sidebar lets you bind your data to it. At the bottom of the editor is a section called Security, which allows you to configure page level permissions in case you would like admins of the app to have access to different pages than your end users, for example. Or you can also create custom roles. If comfortable, one can optionally use CSS and HTML if desired, but this is not required by clicking the Art Palette icon in the Property Editor, which has code completion for easy styling. And finally, at the top of the Property Editor sidebar are a few buttons. From right to left is the Preview button, which lets you see how your final app will look like without publishing it. I find it helpful to preview my app for every page I create. When in preview mode, it also has a log section at the bottom, which allows you to see if there are any errors happening if you wrote a script to automate events. The next button is to publish your app when you are ready to make it available to users. You can deploy multiple instances of your app with completely different data for different departments or clone the same exact data and name each version, test sandbox version or production version, for example. If you click the drop down icon by each deployment's name, it offers more editing options. However, you cannot change the name of your deployment once published. You would need to launch a new deployment to do so. In this case, I want the link to the third version of my app called Urban Planting 3. The first URL listed has a copy icon to copy the link. So you can paste that link to share in an email, in a chat, or embed it into a Google site. And there you have it. This completes our in-depth tour of AppMakers UI. To get started on your app, work with your G Suite admin and try out this code lab that is linked in the description. Then think of a process that presently lives in a spreadsheet and plan how to map it out into AppMaker using Google's online documentation, which is also listed below. If you found this episode helpful, please click like and subscribe. Cheers.